All right, uh, good morning and happy Madaraka Day. Thank you for joining us on Citizen Extra this morning. This is what we have for you uh, this morning. The launch of the much awaited Standard Gauge Railway passenger train service. We look at the impact economically and politically and the accolades and criticism. We'll, all, we'll look at all that. We're also going to look at the Madaraka Day celebrations happening in Nyeri. Of course, the event will be officially marked in Nyeri County. Plus, governors and MP aspirants begin presenting nomination papers to the IBC today. I mean, anxiety on whether IBC will bar any aspirant on integrity grounds. For that, we have our reporters across the country. Jamlek, Kamau, Jamlek in Nakuru, uh, Stephen Leto in Migori, Wanyama John in Eldred, Laura Cheng is in Kisumu, and uh, Francis Gashuri is in Nyeri County, and that is where we begin. Gashuri, good morning and happy Madaraka Day. Already at the grounds, waiting for the official uh, event to begin, of course, being led or marked by President Uhuru Kenyatta. What should we expect today? A very good morning to you, Hussein Mohammed, and indeed, happy Madaraka Day. And the uh, Nyeri County, uh, typical weather here, very cold. This is the home of the Mount Kenya, and so definitely uh, the weather uh, is that chilly. But be it as it may, uh, residents of Nyeri County are making their way to Kabiruine Showground. Uh, this is where they normally come every year uh, for the uh, ASK show, but this time uh, they are here for the Madaraka Day. This is the third time uh, that the national celebrations are being marked outside Nairobi. Remember last year the Madaraka Day was in Nakuru County, the Mashidia Day was in Machakos County, and now we are in uh, Nyeri County. This is the third time that the national festivities are being observed outside the, uh, outside the uh, city uh, center or the, or the seat of power in Nairobi. President Uhuru Kenyatta uh, will be uh, coming here. Uh, we, according to the program, uh, he should be here at about 10.30 or thereabout uh, to officially uh, begin uh, our leading Kenyan in marking the 54th Madaraka Day. And uh, security intensified here, Hussein, since uh, yesterday, uh, last night, uh, the military and the top security officers took over the Kabiruina ground just to mark um, uh, these grounds and ensure that all is well, uh, safety-wise. And all those people who are coming to Nyeri uh, County and the Kabiruina ground uh, specifically are being um, are taken through various security checks just to ensure that everybody who comes here is safe and uh, that the festivities will not be barred by any uh, eventualities. Uh, other than President Uhuru Kenyatta and other top government dignitaries, uh, we also expect opposition leaders uh, to make their way here. They have said uh, they will be coming to Jerry uh, County to join other Kenyans uh, in marking the 54th Madaraka Day. So uh, expect to see uh, the, old, uh, the NASA Pentagon uh, and particularly uh, uh, former Prime Minister and NASA leader uh, Rai Laudinga. Uh, they should be here. We don't know whether they will get an opportunity to address uh, the congregation here, but uh, that is uh, uh, something that we'll be trying to find out as the program uh, continues. And so, other than uh, the security issues, the uh, entertainment going on here, early in the morning we saw the military officers uh, go do going through the paces just to uh, warm up as they prepare to uh, mount that uh, parade. I know saying probably in your other life you would have been a soldier, but uh, unfortunately you did not make it because of other reasons. But uh, you are well represented here uh, in Nyeri County. And I'm not alone. Uh, Lulu Hassan is also here. Uh, uh, she is with the uh, people who have attended uh, the uh, ce 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 celebrations here. And so let me now hand over to Lulu Hassan. Uh, Lulu, karibu sana Nyeri. Uh, sijui mambo vipi naona kijibaridi kidogo cha kuingia lakini usitie shaka hivi ndio mambo huwa hapa nyeri lakini labda tupe mawili matatu kuhusiana na walio hudhuria hafla ya leo hisia zao ni, ni, ni zipi na wanatarajia yepi kuhusiana na maadhimisho haya ya madaraka Naam swadaka sana Francis Gashuri ukiwa upande wa pili katika uwanja huu ama kwa hakika kama unavyoona nyuma yangu ni kwamba maelfu wameweza kuwasili hapa kuadhimisha siku kuu ya madaraka ni siku ambayo wa Kenya wameka tofauti zao za kisiasa kando na hivyo basi ningependa kujua ni lipi uh, wamekuja hapa kufanya nini na matarajio yao ni yepi kuhusiana na siku hii ya leo kwa jina lako kwanza John Kiberenge na John Kiberenge umekuja hapa kwa minajili gani kwa wanajili ya kujua ile kutia sherehe hii tuone president mm -hmm. eh alafu tuone na ile tumekuona shule chinda sana wale wanasema na hii na hii wakitu independent tuona kama heli wagiaka waache kusimulesha mm -hmm. sasa hiyo ndio inakuja mm -hmm. mm -hmm. na, na unatarajia nini kutoka kwa rais uhuru na natarajia 
atuambajie mema na mungu mbariki na zishauriwe tena alafu na mungu atamusaidia na hiyo yote paitimike na kama nilivyosema hapo awali mtazamaji ni kwamba wengi wamejitokeza na hapa sasa naungana naye mwenyekiti wa Maumau anasema yeye ndo mwenyekiti nataka kujua ni yapi ni kwa nini labda amekuja hapa na iwapo matakwa yao yameweza kuafikiwa manake umekuwa na lalama nyingi habari yako mzee habari yako mzuri sana na labda utueleze majina yako kamili na wewe ni nani mimi naitwa Dani Kanimwagi Kalioki ya kuzaliwa ni mama na mama kupiganea uhuru wa nchi hii ya ziko ya leo ilikuwa nikiitwa General Matajago. Naam, General unadhani kwamba maafikio yenu mmeweza kuafikiwa tangu mpigania uhuru? Mambo yetu hata tukiwa tuko nyuma ya zirikali kamili na tunaimivuata sana mambo yetu bado mapato yatotimizwa. Na ukiangalia ni kwamba lalama zenu ni zipi kwa sasa? Lalama zenu ni zipi kwa sasa? Sasa sisi tunakuja hapa kusema tunakuja kucherekea ziko ya leo kwa sababu ni zito lipigania lakini matakwa yetu hajabitishwa watu ile wanaishi maisha ma, mbaya zaidi katika nchi hii yetu ya Kenya ni watu wa maumau sababu wengi wanakufa na tabu sana hawana mapari ya kuzikwa hawana machamba kwa hivyo tukitaka zirikali yetu ile tunavuata kabisa ito itutegenese it, it, maneno yetu ziko ya leo wajaribu utusaidia kupatiwa fidia sisi hakuna fidia tunapatua watu wa maumau hapana ilipatiwa watu wachache sana na sio wale wakiwa wakipigane wakiwa mzituni ni watu ambao walijivanya tena maumau wakalipwa kitu kidogo sana lakini sisi watu wale mimi naongoza sisi tulikataa na tukasema mzugu anataka kututaganya kupatia mtu tatu na arobaine siku ya leo hiyo hakuna kitu inaweza kununua kwa hivyo ile maisha tunaye tunaichi ile 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 maisha baya kwa sababu wazungu wanataka tukue kama ile zamani na mkimtazama uko unadhani kwamba sheria hizi zina ma... sheria hizi zina maana yoyote kwa sasa sherehe hii ina maana kabisa kwa sababu siku hii ya leo ya sherehe hii ni sisi tulipigania hata sisi tukiwa tunaishi tukiwa mazikini hatuwezi kupigana na zikali yetu kwa sababu sisi hii ni sisi tulipigania na tunaifurahia sana siku ya leo kwa sababu tuna kiongozi ambao anaongoza nchi yetu na mdogo yake kwa hivyo uhuru Kenyata na Ruto tunakuja kwa cherehekea na hawa kwa sababu zidi hiyo tuletiza hizi kwa ya leo na hivyo tunabaidika kwa ziko ya, ya leo kabisa hata ni muhimu sana ni baadhi ya maoni ambayo tumeweza kuyasikia kwa hivi sasa kutoka kwa mwenyekiti wa Maumau hadi sasa anasema kwamba kidogo hawajapewa fidia na mambo ambayo yaliweza kuzungunzwa kwamba kwao hayajafikia lakini kwa sasa nakurudisha kwa ke Francis Gashuri atupeleke hadi studio na asante sana Rudi Hassan maoni kutoka kwa wananchi hapo na tunatarajia kwamba hisia zao na maoni yao labda yatakuwa kwenye hotuba ya rais katika uh, maadhimisho ya leo Hussein this is the last uh, national festivity oh, basically the national the last national festivities for president Uhuru Kenyatta in his first term in office and remember he has been cleared by IBC to seek a second term in the August general election so you will expect that um, in his speech today uh, a lot of it will be basically dwelling on what the government he thinks the government has been able to achieve in so far as the promises he gave in 2013 are concerned and probably also to try and make new promises as he seeks a second term in office uh, in August and so basically we wait to see what will be happening and of course other than the presidential speech the other highlight is that basically uh, the parade that will be mounted here shortly and as soon as it is we will be able to show our viewers how the soldiers will be marching to the ground I've seen them from where they are and they look resplendent back to you Hussein and see you later Aira Magilani, Mary Ann Naiposoi, ahead of the, uh, I mean, that is where President Kenyatta will be leading Kenyans in officially marking uh, Madaraka Day, leading the celebrations there. Like Gashuri says, or as he says, opposition leaders also expected there, so interest, an interesting event that promises to be, but we don't know yet whether uh, the flag bearer, another flag bearer, Raila Odinga, is scheduled to address Wananchi uh, in Nyeri.
Also this morning, remember, governor and MP aspirants across the country begin presenting nomination papers to the IEBC ahead of the August uh, elections. And we have our reporters across the country uh, following that. That is in Nakuru County now, the pictures now you can see live in Nakuru County. That is the senator, current senator, Mungai James Kiarie, I think presenting his nominations papers uh, to the IEBC. Right, that is happening in Nakuru and Jamlek, a reporter there, will be joining us shortly with more information. Right now we cross over to Migori County. We also expect aspirants there, governor and MP aspirants, to present their nomination papers there today. Steve Vileto, what is the latest from there? Well, a very good morning to you, Hussein Mohammed in studio, and a happy Madaraka Day to you from the county 044, that is the county of Migori. Of course, you've mentioned it there that uh, governor aspirants as well as members of parliament are expected to drop uh, their application papers or uh, what is uh, say nomination papers to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. And so that is exactly what will be happening today in Migori. Already, there was a lot of singing and dances all night here in Migori County, particularly in Migori town where supporters of Migori Governor Okoth Obado are wait, w were waiting for today before they escort or they accompany their Governor Okoth Obado to present his nomination papers to the IEBC because what we know is uh, already the Governor for Migori is uh, staging a roadshow before he heads uh, to the IEBC offices and so he is expected to kick off his, uh, uh, his tour in Rongo before making an address there. He will also be addressing his supporters in Awendo town uh, before uh, sneaking into Uriri and then having his way by road uh, to Migori town where he will be uh, presenting his papers in Migori TTC and so that is what we are keeping an eye on. Remember also the, uh, the candidate for the Amani National Congress for the gubernatorial seat for uh, Migori County that is Jack Okoth is also expected to drop his nomination papers to the IEBC officials today and uh, so we the tight race uh, in Migori is the between the incumbent Zakaria Okoto Bado and former cabinet minister Ochilo Ayako. Uh, but today Ochilo Ayako will not be presenting, but he will be doing that tomorrow. That is a day after his opponent Okoto Bado do the same. And so uh, several members of parliament are also lined up uh, to uh, present their nomination papers. Remember, uh, Migori has eight constituencies, to say, including uh, Rongo constituency, uh, Wendo, Uriri, uh, Nyatike, we have uh, Suna East, Suna West and also we have Korea East and Korea West. All those members of parliament are expected to present their nominations papers today. All already we are told that uh, Suna East member of parliament, Junette Mohammed, who is also the audience director, director of elections, is also set to present his uh, papers by noon today. But uh, uh, technically we are seeing that uh, this process is going all the uh, way towards uh, the afternoon because we expect that Obado, by the time he's done with all, uh, all his roadshows across the uh, all the constituencies in Migori County, then it will be uh, past midday because also he is expected to attend or to address a rally, a major rally they call to, uh, at, the, at the Migori Stadium uh, later in the afternoon. And so that is what we are keeping an eye. Remember, Hussein, uh, this is one of the ODM strongholds and so uh, whipping members uh, uh, of the party to come out and vote in the August 8 polls is crucial. And so that is the need where we are seeing uh, Governor Okoso Bado uh, is running on an ODM ticket. But uh, uh, Ochila who was uh, bundled out by the, uh, in the nominations uh, exercise, that is the party primaries, uh, ran on an independent ticket. For the party, they say 
this will encourage supporters of across uh, the, 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 the support uh, divide to go and, and cast their ballot in the August 8 polls. Hussein, this is a county that has registered over 300,000 voters uh, uh, across all the registrations and so it's one of the, uh, of course, uh, uh, vote which, uh, uh, counties in, uh, in the Nyanza, uh, that is in the South Nyanza region and so we are going to keep an eye, of course, what will be happening and of course how the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Migori residents, of course, will be celebrating today's Madaraka Day after that presentation of uh, papers that is way in the afternoon, Hussein. Right, Leto, uh, before you go, I mean, there's been concern, I mean, um, the anxiety, I mean, whether IBC will buy any of these uh, uh, aspirants going to sit uh, to present their nomination papers. Has there been any anxiety where you are? Are people worried? that uh, what, what we are told is, of course, uh, supporters, uh, supporters of Zakaria Kotobadu, that is the incumbent governor of Migori County, are all aware of what is happening uh, in terms of what IABC or what other state agencies, including the non-governmental organizations, that is the Red Guard Alliance, that really uh, uh, listed several governors, several politicians, that they will not be, they should not be cleared, including the governor for Migori Kotobadu. That is why all his supporters woke up early in earnest just to keep an eye that is why they want to escort him but those concerns are alive here but uh, you know several uh, issues have been have been raised including the, the Senate Public Accounts and Investment Committee raising the same concerns over the use of finances in Midori County and that is what uh, the, uh, the supporters here are saying they want to go and witness should IBC if IBC will bar them or not okay uh, civil reporting to us live from Midori County will be joining him uh, later on uh, on Citizen Extra Right now we're crossing over to Kisubu County. Laura uh, Chieng uh, is there right now with the latest. Laura? Right. Uh, we, we get, we'll, we'll have Laura shortly. But remember this morning, Governor and MP aspirants across the country uh, begin presenting nomination papers to the IBC ahead of the August uh, elections. The pictures now on your screen are from Nakuru County where the current senator is presenting his nomination papers. We now have Laura in Kisumu. Laura, good morning and what is the latest? Good morning to you, Hussein. And yes, here in Kisumu County, we're anticipating the uh, presentation of papers for members of parliament and governors. Our information we have right now is that the incumbent governor, Jack Ranguma, is expected to present his nomination papers later in the afternoon. And of course, we are also waiting for uh, members of parliament from across various regions. Of course, we'll be expecting to see uh, Kisumu Central aspirant, uh, Fred Ouda, and of course, an independent candidate, Yusuf Oro, is also expected to be presenting his papers today, Hussein. And of course, we'll be also expecting to see Senator, nominated Senator Joy Gwendo, who is running for the Nyando parliamentary seat on a jubilee ticket. Of course, those are some of the people we expect to see today presenting their papers, Hussein. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be joining you later when some of these aspirants uh, go to present the nomination uh, papers. And in Eldoret, I believe we have John Wanyama right now uh, with the latest here. John, if you can hear us, what is the latest? Okay, we'll cross over to John uh, shortly. Uh, as we told you this morning, of course, uh, President Kenyatta yesterday launched the standard gauge railway passenger train with the Madaraka Express setting off on its maiden journey from Mombasa uh, yesterday. During the launch, the President announced that passengers in the economy class would pay 700 shillings for the journey between Mombasa and the capital city, uh, that is in Nairobi.
and in studio we have Senator, uh, nominated Senator Beatrice Elati and also John Dua, an investment uh, analyst. Senator Elati, of course, will be presenting her papers uh, later uh, this afternoon. I hope we didn't take so much of your time, uh, Senator, but thank you so much for making time for us. Uh, what do you make, first, I mean, how, how do you, uh, from what we saw yesterday, and I'll start with you, uh, John Dua, how important is this launch by, uh, by President Uru Kenyatta yesterday? The launch is quite important, especially for him, since being an incumbent president, having delivered such a huge project on time and way within budget, it's such a huge project for him because politically it's given the, mil mil the milestone and the mileage ahead of its competitors and also economically, this yeah. project is supposed to add about 1.5 points to Kenya's economic growth and it's also supposed to create a lot of jobs for the Kenyans, so it's, it's a really big milestone for him also. Okay, so economically it's very, very important. Yeah. And if we could look at some uh, graphics that we have on how uh, different that, uh, how different it is, the SGR train impact, of course it will be going 60 kilometers per hour, that is, that is what we were doing before the SGR. Uh, now it's 120 kilometers per hour, transporting 5% of loads, the, the, the previous one, now this will transport 50% of loads, uh, 1.6 million tons annually, that is what we are doing. Now we'll have 22 million tons uh, annually being moved. Uh, now we'll also have fewer trucks on the road and less passes on the road. Very important, we must say, uh, Senator Elachi. Yes, first of all, uh, just to say uh, to him and to us, it was a mom compia. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, one of the things that you feel is uh, how uh, important and historic it was. And uh, for me, when I look at it from a parent's uh, view, and, and you know Hussein, for many years when we have been taking our children to Mombasa, especially uh, school children going to Mombasa for trips, for what, I think for now they will, for the first time, join into a train and you can go as many schools as possible together and go to Mombasa, enjoy, feel a bit safe uh, uh, and come back home when parents still feel they have gone through that road and they are back. When you look at the fatal, uh, I mean, uh, the accidents that we get uh, every time on that route, the trucks, I think one of the things is now that business is going to change. And uh, one of the things that the truck uh, people must understand, and I, and I know some will come in and say economically, now we will face out the truck drivers. I think what we are saying, it will arrive in, Mo in Nairobi, you have shortened your trip, so you can now uh, use shorter time to get your goods to DRC Congo, to get your goods to Rwanda, to get your goods to Uganda. And we are hoping also as we move on that the President will be able to ensure his promises of saying it will go to Kisumu. It arrives in Kisumu and that's when now you open up Kisumu, you open up Lake Victoria, it becomes a hub that people have never seen before and you'll see again employment coming in. When I looked at those young people who have seen yesterday, I told God we have huge young people who would need to do something and they are willing to work for their lives. It's only that we, we are so limited and, and we have indeed, to thank God, we are many now, but the production we have, the young people we have, the 70% of our country, if we can put them somewhere to do something, then I believe economically we'll move we will see prosperity in our country, we will reduce insecurity in our country, and that's what I saw in the eyes of those young people. They served us so well, Hussein, you could see. They were determined to show this is a new thing and we are ready to take it to the next level. But there was still a lot of, and there's still been a lot of uh, criticism uh, as regards especially the cost and whether it is actually value uh, for money, but we'll talk about that shortly. First, let's cross over to Kiambu County, where Governor Aspirant Ferdinand Waitu to the current Kabet MP is presenting his nomination papers uh, right now, if you can follow the proceedings. <laughs> Thank 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is uh, Governor Aspirant Kiambu County, Ferdinand Waititu, now addressing the media, of course, after presenting his nomination papers uh, to the IEBC uh, in Kiambu. John Wanyama is in Eldoret. John, good morning. What should we expect or what is the latest there? Good morning, Hussein. Uh, um, here in Eldoret is a very chill morning and uh, we are just expecting a few politicians today to present their papers to IEBC for authentication. And uh, tomorrow is when we are going to witness a lot of them, especially the two aspirants who are going for gubernatorial seat in Washington okay. issue, that is Jackson Mandago and Muzeki Budotich presenting their papers tomorrow and uh, as, as uh, so far we are also going to El Geo Marraquet just to see today the governor for El Geo Marraquet will also be presenting his papers today to IEBC and in Eldoret town uh, things are just cool nothing much uh, just rain a bit I just want to talk to one of the uh, a young a young women rep, uh, women rep who just presented her uh, papers yesterday She's only 30 years and we want to know why she just entered politics and uh, maybe if you can come close here. How was the process yesterday when you were going to present your papers? Okay, thank you so much Mr. Wanyama. The process yesterday wasn't so, it wasn't so straight or it wasn't so well because uh, I was supposed to be cleared by, by 9, between 9 and 10, but unfortunately I was cleared by 5. This is because I, I suspected there was not something that it was good. That is, uh, I suspected there was a witch hand or someone was behind it because my papers were not. Uh, I, 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 had, I, I, I was in a position to present them and I had that, but I, 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 I was in a position to present them and I gave out my papers. I gave out what was required, but. Uh, I was nearly sumbuli wakidoko, so I decided to go back. I was told to go back and then it's a footage, the, the signatures. I went back again with the signatures and I was cleared by five. So I suspected there was something not good. So you went back to the street to look for signatures and then you come back or where, where did you get these signatures after you were told to go back? Yes, thank you so much. I got the signatures by my supporters. I went back to the streets. I asked my supporters, I called them, and in fact they were so ready to come and give me the signatures, they gave me the IDs, they, all the, the requirements I was given by my supporters. So they, they supported me, and then I went back to the cyber, I, 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 I started the whole process. But eventually, when I went back to the IBC, they cleared me. They had alleged that you had a very fake form. Where did you get this form? Uh, to be sincere, I got the form, in the, I, I was given the form by the IBC members, Mosa. So I was, I, I was shocked. Personally, I was shocked. Why are these people telling me this? Uh, this, this form wasn't uh, the right form. Yet they were the ones who gave me. So I was like, what is happening? Okay. Yeah. But eventually, I thanked them because they, 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 they cleared me. They gave me another form. I went back. I did not want to, to start quarrelling with them. But I went back again, and then I, I just decided to start the whole process. But eventually, they, 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 they cleared me. Thank you. Hussein, these are just some of our few challenges, maybe aspirants, especially those who are, in independent, uh, uh, who are independent candidates are facing maybe during this clearing process. She's on independent uh, ticket and most of those who are on independent ticket in Washington County have vowed that they will also be attending William Ruto's and Uhur Kenyatta's meeting 
uh, during when they come here to to Washington to campaign we are just wondering to see how will that scenario unfold when it comes but from my side Hussein I have no much we are just looking into these stories as from here we are going to Madaraka uh, in the sixth four stadium to see what is happening back to you Hussein okay Wanyama thank you so much uh, as I told you President Uhuru Kenyatta launched uh, the standard gauge railway passenger train with the Madaraka Express setting off on its maiden journey from Mombasa yesterday. During the launch, the president announced that passengers in the economy class would pay 700 shillings for their journey between Mombasa and the capital city, Nairobi. It was a case of goodbye to the old and hello to the new. On Wednesday morning, the Madaraka Express set off on its maiden journey with President Uhuru Kenyatta, Deputy President William Ruto and members of the public on board. Its departure from the coastal town of Mombasa, heralding a new age in rail transport in the country. Among those old enough to remember its predecessor, the SGR passenger train eliciting a bout of nostalgia about what had been and excitement about what would be the changes expected to make all the difference. This great facility that will be convenient, safer, faster, cost effective and most importantly enjoyable. Over 100 years before the Madaraka Express, there was the Lunatic Express constructed under British colonial rule. A train that was characterized and was criticized by all those in the British Parliament as a train to nowhere but a train that ultimately formed the basis of the new nation of Kenya. The Madaraka Express setting out to make its own impact in the digital age, splitting the carriages into two distinct classes, first class and economy class. First class passengers set to enjoy advantages such as more legroom, and power points to charge electronics, creature comforts on the five-hour journey between Mombasa and Nairobi with stops in between. The economy providing a more affordable option. Mwananchi wa kawaida awe anaweza apande hii reli kutoka Mombasa kwenda Nairobi na silipishwe zaidi ya shilingi ya saba. The large clear windows giving clear views of the landscape as it speeds by, making it ideal for tourists. But leisure aside, why is the SGR considered a game changer? Analysts expect it to spur economic growth. Passenger trains will shuttle at an average speed of 120 kilometers per hour, double the speed of the old trains, while the cargo trains will travel at 80 kilometers per hour, moving 22 million tons in loads annually against the 1.6 million tons moved annually on the old rail network. The SGR is also expected to see the number of trucks on the road reduce, increasing road safety while creating jobs. The train can take about 1,500 passengers in one trip, the equivalent of about 20 Mombasa-bound buses. In the wake of cases of vandalism reported before the grand launch, the president issuing a stern warning. One of the key cornerstones to Kenya's transformation to an industrialized, prosperous, middle-income country. Economic sabotage ni ile inaitua capital offense. Yani ukihukimiwa, wewe unaenda kinyonga. Tunaelewana? The train operations, however, are still a work in progress, with officials expected to iron out the kinks and draw up a schedule in a few months. Nine hours after it started its journey, the Madaraka Express drawing into the Siokimao train station. Despite the hurdles, the journey of a thousand miles has already begun. Well, only 1,300 lucky passengers made it to the list uh, of history makers on the 609-kilometer trip to Nairobi from Mombasa. And among them was our reporter Sam Gituku. This was his experience. It took the Kenyan flag to give green light to the first official standard gauge railway commuter train ride. 
setting off for a journey that should ideally last around five hours non-stop, albeit with five stopovers, during which President Kenyatta and his entourage addressed waiting crowds. <laughs> in the train, selected passengers sat in 16 coaches, majority of them in the economy cars, with a seating capacity of 118. The lucky ones sat just 72 a coach, the first class. And here, passengers had all the comforts replete with charging systems with abundance, refreshments. Those in the economy coaches too had their serving. Kila interval, we have something to bite. In the morning, there was a, a piece of cake, there was tea, those uh, fruits, watermelon. At lunchtime, there was what meat. <laughs> <laughs> the dining coach with a sitting capacity of 50 served as a temporary clinic, attended to at least 74 passengers on board. We have to rejoin this maiden trip to travel to Nairobi, and we are offering the medical services to the patient, to the passengers. Uh, we'll be having a doctor in the in the train. But we have also made arrangements with the hospitals along the corridor for them to be able to provide the service at the next station. With many VIPs on board, nothing was left to chance. Along the route, helicopters kept vigil and so did police officers on the ground. In the train, mobile phones had been jammed, limiting communication. The train passing through the Savo National Park offering passengers a scenic view complete with wildlife in natural bounds. A group of young Kenyans taken from the First Lady's Pupil Reward System and the Kenyatta Trust Foundation were also lucky to take a ride. It's fun. I like it. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's been nice so far. I'm overwhelmed. I like wants to see too. And as the president stopped at Maria Kani, Voi, Mutito and Day, Emali and Abi River stations, passengers enjoyed a much needed stretch of legs between the coaches. At exactly 7 minutes to 7 o'clock this evening, the train lumbered to a stop at the Nairobi terminus in Sukimau. Yeah, yeah. How was the ride? How was the ride? The ride was excellent. Yeah. I slept. It's not noisy, it's cozy. And then it goes first, but you never notice. Yeah, it's just smooth. Beginning tomorrow, Kenyans can ride between Nairobi and Mombasa with the trip set to kick off at 9 a.m. daily for 700 shillings for the economy class and 3,000 for first class but without the refreshments. Today was a treat by His Excellency the President for the inaugural train. So this will not, the goodies that you've seen here will not be available uh, but people will be served with maybe a bottle of water and some, and maybe a snack. All is well that ends well and this inaugural trip has confirmed just that however as SGR begins to commercialize the trip and the Kenyans begin to feel first hand impact it shall have their own story to tell if they dream to ride. Some get to present TV, Sokimau, Nairobi County. Right. Uh in the studio, uh, the British Alati is the nominated center. Apparently, she was also lucky to be among those who made the trip uh, from Mombasa to Nairobi yesterday. And now we're joined by Ray Ochieng, a, a governance expert. Very good morning. Uh, Beatrice has been very, I mean, he's, she's been praising uh, the FTR yes. launch yesterday and the economic impact and how important it is for the country. What do you, what do you think? Uh, first to say, uh, uh, it's good to be emphatic about uh, the gains uh, that the SGR will do. It's a great project and, um, and uh, as a matter of fact it's going to have impact and uh, we've seen the highlights that we've seen in terms of how it's going to give ease to our roads and everything. Mm -hmm. um, on, on that note I, I really love the SGR and um, there, there, there are other questions still around SGR that has to be still answered and I had a privilege to be having um, Moshimo Elachi and uh, Moshimo Wamalu at the other time. I think it was uh, two days ago here in the same yeah. studio. Yeah. And uh, 
I, I, I was still asking the questions from both the, the divides and I asked uh, the NASA side that some of these things, why did they raise them earlier? Because we see when IBC uh, does anything, they can even go and lie on the streets because we think there's been a lot of uh, uh, integrity issues and a lot of uh, inflations. And, and the last time, if at all, I was not, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, Moshimura can correct me, actually we were agreeing that there, there is an inflation that was done in this. There, there, there is uh, taxpayers' money was saying that, was, uh, that has been lost in the SGR. So the question is, who is responsible? Because there was still uh, both pointing of hands that who started. I know uh, the, the pro former mm -hmm. prime minister is talking about it was the uh, grand coalition idea, but the fact is, saying I would still be asking the same same questions, even if the, the, the former prime minister would have been the implementer. Because uh, let's look at we have around 600 billion uh, that was uh, that went into this project. We're saying we have not seen uh, a, t a transparent feasibility study. A mega project like this, because we know this is uh, one of the most big milestones that Jubilee government has launched, and the way I've said, it is a great idea. But the fact is, if we, we looked at the cost-benefit analysis, we look at the value for money, in terms of could have we done, if it is great, could have we done better, because it's the Chinese who did the feasibility study, it is the Chinese who have ended up doing everything. And we're saying again, this is a loan that we're going to be paying uh, many years to come. So I don't want us only to be excited about uh, uh, the, the, the track and the, and the courage and everything uh, on the system uh, working, but the fact is, how are we accountable? Because if we reach to a point whereby mega projects are launched like this, Hussein, and I say two things about development. There's the hard infrastructure. There's the soft infrastructure of development. And this now comes to the point of uh, the value and the integrity of these processes. So I, I think there is some questions that are not being answered. And, uh, and I'm not holding brief for, for, for the opposition. Mm -hmm. I'm not holding brief for the Jubilee government. But there are issues. We are in a place whereby this country, uh, UNGA is an issue. Unemployment is an issue. Inflation is an issue. So every coin would have really gone to make sure that the taxpayer of this country becomes, uh, becomes uh, contented. So I also talk as a taxpayer, and I also talk as an informed taxpayer, who this major project, we are going to be paying with our children's children's money. So well, let's not just get excited about, yes, it's working, but if some money were lost, to we'll say, and Mishmael like you were saying that, you see, it was the, uh, former, the, the former regime that started, this and they know where things may have gone wrong. Why don't they raise it? And we see people uh, get this capital. Uh, we've seen that people are vandalizing the SGR may even serve the whole of their life. But uh, people who may have been accountable for some billions in the implementation are home and dry and we are smiling, taking selfies. Okay, Senator. Well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, I want to just say a good thing, a better thing, we thank God. That is one. But in all that, I know there are a lot of issues. And for me, I think uh, we've now moved from one step. First of all, done it in a historic way, because uh, when you read uh, in all, even the Chinese themselves, they were saying doing it in two years was not a joke. Uh, uh, and therefore, uh, that is one thing we should uh, start asking ourselves. I think when we are talking about all this, Hussein, we must now put Kenya and look at how we deal with our country when we are doing mega projects. One of the things we have to learn as Kenya, we must compensate land. And it's not a must. We have decided that's how people make business. So when a project is very expensive and it's a government project, we ask ourselves, where have we gotten land? In Tanzania, in uh, Ethiopia, in all the countries that we give examples, one of the things they have made sure is to take care that government owns land and therefore when you're doing any of these projects you don't need to compensate land so when you see the billions that went into land and I think that is why even the chairman of lands is in some of the troubles he faces today because of uh, some of the compensations that we had on this standard gauge earlier thing but that is one thing we need to ask ourselves mo moving forward because one of the things I want to believe and I'm hoping that uh, come after August, next parliament that comes in, we are going to look at issues that will help our country and see how now we can deal with solutions in terms of issues of corruption, in terms of what we feel this is where we do our own corruption. Because I've always said, corruption is us. When we say the government has done, the government did not do bad government. It is a person who is seated on a desk somewhere 
who is either a luo a luya kikuyu who works as a civil servant who has taken us to that route this thing of thinking only politicians is where we get it wrong also in this corruption agenda i want us as kenyans to face ourselves today is madaraka day reflect into ourselves what have i done in the years you find someone has worked on a desk for 30 years and maybe within that desk the things you have done for god is only god that knows so for me i think the best answer in all this hussein will be we have now implemented i know now the audits will start coming out very clearly mm -hmm. we will sit here mm -hmm. we will look at it but i want to just say this mm -hmm. It is time. Some of us will have to be very bold, Hussein. We will be very unpopular, but we shall be bold to say, which is Elachi, you have done, move, go to jail, as he says, the president have heard him so well. So, it's not just those who are vandalizing. We are saying, even the ones who gave us. I want to give an example, and I, I, I think I looked at that fence. And I asked myself so many questions. You know, when you go on, you just don't go on a trip to enjoy. I was going also to look and see. I would uh, salute them and say, when I look at the stations they have given us, Hussein, they did their best. It is much better than what we have at the airport. So I question also those at the airport. What really happened to our arrivals? I don't understand that tent that is at the airport. And, and, and for me, uh, that is where now I, I, I can say yes. I have a red flag to ask a lot of questions about our arrivals at the airport. And when I look at what the, Chinese, the, 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 the China Bridge has done for us as stations of railway, that those are modern designed architects that you look and you feel this is a station and that's what we want to see even at the airport and therefore we shall be raising questions not just at the standard gauge railway uh, but so we're saying if we want Mashimura, to move Mashimura is, um, is, is very religious today and really invoking <laughs> <laughs> the name of the almighty God uh, and we, we thank God for from and uh, Mashimura is very proud <coughs> to say talking about uh, the, a strong audit is going to be done and I believe that first of all uh, before you do a strong audit because an audit should have also just given us, a, in terms of a trajectory, what were we expecting to achieve and have we achieved it? And what are some of the gaps that an audit report is going to raise? But uh, before even we come there, and uh, the, the, the most important fundamental uh, nascent, at the nascent stage of saying, is then, uh, look at, in terms of a feasibility study report, remember, uh, Mushimura, this, this, this um, uh, project is for the Kenyan people by the Kenyans. And, and, and I wonder in terms of why is it that in terms of giving the exact information on, on the value of this project, the value for money on this project, and we've had, and I think uh, last time Hussein we were debating about, uh, about Ethiopia and, and what is coming up in Tanzania, mm -hmm. and we were talking about the terrain and everything, and just last week it, uh, it, the, 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 the records came clearly that in terms of Ethiopia is going to uh, overtake us as an economic giant. So the question is, if they've done the electric Tanzania is also going to do the same. Then feasibility study Moshimia should have told us that this is going to be the value for money. So that's why we are groping in the dark. So when you get the opposition coming this side and say that, you know what, this thing was inflated, the government saying that, you know what, look at our terminals, they are, they are more better. But you see, we are not coming to the crux of that matter in terms of, I believe, I was saying that the 600 billion then should have done even something so much superior to what we've, we've had. And the Mwishimio again is also highlighting in terms of that many people are going to, people could go to jail. And we had the president talking about the good, but we are talking about this thing. We have three people who vandalized. And you, 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 you read that they are going to be like economic saboteurs. And that is, wrong. That, that is right in terms of what they are doing. But there are many great offenses that have been done in these mega projects even before we begin. But we're saying, Kenyans, we are not talking about the billions. And what Moshinoa is saying, that when you become so bold in this country, maybe uh, somebody may brand me, is Ray holding grief for NASA and everything. But the question is, these are billions that cannot be accounted for. And if we go this way, then we are going to end up mortgaging our country. So uh, the CBA on this project then also has to go in tandem with that. And that's where we are going to be addressing Chapter 6, we're saying. Because in terms of integrity, and values and, and transparency, this has also to be part and parcel of our project. 
John, uh, let's say you'll respond shortly, but John, uh, John Doe, of course, the investment analyst with Cyton. Um, from where you are and what you've been seeing on, about this project, SGR, have there been any concerns you've come across as regards especially inflating uh, uh, the project, the cost of the project? Mm, with regard to the cost of the project, it's quite steep when you compare it to projects done by countries like Ethiopia. But when you compare Ethiopia and Kenya, there's the aspect of the huge land compensation that Kenya had to undergo through. Because Ethiopia, the, the government in Ethiopia actually did not compensate the people who had, who owned the land. Despite the government owning land and us being given land at leasehold, we are such a complicated country politically that you cannot just go and relocate people without any form of compensation. And especially if the project is being done by a government that is up for re-election. So that's one aspect. I also agree with the aspect of this lack of transparency as to how the money is being used despite each, despite us seeing the project itself, there's also the gap that where, where this money was used, is it accurate, is it, was it actually inflated? So we don't have that kind of research. So that has been a problem. I mean, yeah. Yeah. the process itself has not been yeah. very transparent so that people yeah. know from stage A to stage B, A, B, C, D has been used and all that. Sure. Uh, Senator, you responded to me. Well, uh, and do you think that is a concern actually? Even from where you stand that uh, it hasn't been very transparent in terms of how the process has been going on over the last four years? Well, I would say uh, my concern is, and I'll also say maybe uh, my ignorance because uh, I think uh, in terms of uh, being transparent I can just work in any government office. We have a law that is very clear. You just go and get the facts right. I think the most important thing when we continue debating on this uh, Hussein, it's mm -hmm. important to bring the facts so that we know. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a government to government project. Uh, first of all, we are dealing with a nation called China where they also would wish to see their things very transparent and therefore I don't think this is something that uh, we will not get all the info that we want because when you look at uh, how they have moved now and they have a new law also that uh, when you're tendering government uh, state uh, institutions together, the Chinese one, they tender back home and the government of China will know this is the company that is going to do the work either in Kenya or Tanzania or where. So they also have a process that is very clear and when you follow their laws you, you, you find that you, are not just, you don't just come and compete commercially. Your government, because it is that government that now gives in their loan for you to work. So when we say that we have used uh, the billions, I think the Chinese government also, that company is accountable back to their country. Where now we can get the facts. If you feel you're not getting the facts right in Kenya, I believe I, 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 that just the way people went and did their research on the euro bonds and all that, you can still go and you will get your fat side. So this is one project that we cannot run away that we can say it is not transparent. It is so transparent if we want to follow and get the facts right. This is a project that has also been very, very scrutinized by KRA. So it is a project, if you just go to KRA, you'll see. You've brought in this, you've done this. I think when we talk of the 600 billion Hussein, we'll be uh, sending a wrong uh, statement mm -hmm. to Kenyans because we are saying from Mombasa to Nairobi they've spent 327 billion and the rest that is coming in is supposed to help it to go to Naivasha and right. then go to Kisumu. Right. So I, I, and, and that is one thing also we have to be very careful that, as we say. That, that was very of course. Yeah, that, that was. Uh, but yeah, but, but I mean you, made, you made the whole project. Yeah, yeah, yeah I made now the whole project with the yeah. whole project. But for now it's 327 billion. Yes. But yeah. even that, yeah. there have been concerns about that. Uh, from NASA uh, flag bearer Rilo Dinger, of course, the president responded to that. Uh, let's hear uh, what Rilo Dinger said about it. It is not something that we oppose. We conceived it. The time we awarded it at 227 billion dollars, uh, uh, shillings. They retended it and the order is at 350 billion children. So it is just the cost of it. And because of all that has to be paid by the taxpayer, that is the only uh, uh, problem we have. It was not their idea, it was our grand condition government idea. And then we were happy that this is happening. We want to thank the Chinese government for uh, working together with us to make. Uh, this 
despite again a lot of criticism we now celebrate not the lunatic express but the madaraka express <laughs> that will begin to reshape the story of Kenya for the next hundred years. Be patient, my brothers and sisters. Be supportive and help with constructive criticism so that we can improve and ultimately have what we want, which is a world-class working railway. And I want to assume uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is responding to such criticism because this is not the first time the concerns have been raised about the cost and inflation of the cost. A difference of about 100 billion shillings, according to Raila Odinga, saying then under coalition government they tendered it for 227 billion. Now it's 327 billion. It's a difference of 100 billion shillings. But then you had President Kenyatta Ray, and you've raised these concerns as well, saying you need to be supportive and uh, criticism should be constructive criticism. Yeah. And this criticism has been there yeah. in mega projects, just like he says a hundred years ago with the Lunatic Express. Yeah. Uh, Usain, and that's why Mwishimiwa um, uh, uh, blows uh, cold and hot. And in, in some areas, Mwishimiwa Inachi is saying that yes, there are some other few things that need to be addressed. And I agree with the President that uh, in one way or the other, we should not criticize, but we should critique. And critiquing means that even in terms of our development to say, then we must grow and also ask ourselves that, how then do we become better as a society? Uh, benchmarking on best practices, we know that already uh, you've given us the figures of 100 billion. If I thought maybe like uh, there's, there's a change of a project of 100 billion, I think it is not my honor to walk into key areas as an individual to begin to check that how was this 100 billion. I think there should have been at some point uh, the technical people around this area really highlighting why is this big difference because we say sometimes we may it can be a perception we may be talking about yes that 100 billion uh, may have been stolen and actually if it is highlighted blow by blow and we know that this is where this 100 billion went then sometimes we even end up uh, being uh, sanitized because information is power so it's not the honors of an individual pedestrian to walk down offices to do a research for himself because remember this is a project that is done for the people of Kenya by the people of Kenya so the Kenyans themselves there is the article is it article uh, 40, 56 the right to information we have the right to information and as an accountable government then that then becomes a prerequisite uh, of, uh, of the citizens so I'm not I'm not saying that that is wrong and that is why even I think the former Prime Minister whether they have been uh, there have been a push and pull of things between the two coalitions. Yeah. I, I've even heard it because the, this project uh, entirely emphatically, I say, is very beneficial. Even the former Prime Minister could not deny by saying that it is a great idea. And, and I believe that even them moving forward, they should also not criticize, but critique. But we're saying some hard questions need to be answered. And maybe like minds like us should also just ask this for the benefit of the nation so that we also learn uh, from the other lessons so that in the next time we are having mega projects to say we grow from one level of not just celebrating uh, the physical part of the infrastructure and not looking at the sustainability and the, 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 the behind the scenes that may be so critical. Okay, Senator Zewanda. Uh, uh, thank you, Hussein. What I would say is that um, one, I don't want to go into the 100 billion because really a hundred billion going back to Exim Bank and you say you have raised your project from two to another hundred billion is something we need to crack and, and maybe look at it in a, in, a, in a very honest manner and then we see because when politicians we are on a podium we say anything uh, as long as we've finished we always say it has gone to the people let them uh, now bite in and, and uh, it will get their answers which I think uh, talking of a hundred billion when you extend such a project I think even parliament would have questioned a hundred billion but for me I would want us now to move look at what at the design stage was proposed we will come here, let us give also Kenyans information. They would wish to get that of information, Hussein. They would wish to see a project that is viable, moving, so that 
the lessons we learn from Mombasa to Nairobi we learn going to Kisumu and see how we we can manage but the other thing we need to ask ourselves the time frame of that contract if they were reduced to two years and you're supposed to do this project in four years what, what are some of the things that you go through because I know that is where now you come in and you, you, you make it a project that becomes a bit expensive so that's, that's another thing the time frame has to tell us but more importantly I think for us who will be coming here we will have to go and do our research with saying so that when we are giving info to Kenyans it is facts that we are giving Kenyans but if we play uh, on the gallery of us politicians then we will always have our own propaganda so that I can please this side and uh, uh, my beaches will be pleasing Jubilee and in the end the Kenyan who would want to understand how we are moving on modernizing our country and how expensive infrastructure is will not understand we will always come and say this has happened and, and let us not forget the money is not with the Chinese. I believe whoever did the contracts, they are in this country. They are Kenyans who are given the subcontractor. So if you inflated under anything, we as Kenyans have a right to tell you, come and pay back some of the money that is not yours. So we are saying, we are, we, are, we are not talking to aliens who are out. These are Kenyans who are businessmen. And if they did anything to do that, if we want to prove our country right going forward, then we must face it and take you to court and say this was inflated with this and they have to pay back the money all right uh, john finally I, mean, I don't know if you are you have information as to this uh, about the variations and the inflation did you have from where you where you sit did you have uh, the costs uh, before uh, jubilee took power and after so that we can maybe i mean Beatrice is talking about the need to have the comparison she obviously doesn't believe what Rilo Odinga is saying. Yeah, the yeah. costs, what uh, former Prime Minister is saying, is actually true. It was 100 billion less than what it is now. But what you're not understanding is we are borrowing money in dollars. And the shilling back then was about 80 shillings to the dollar. Now it's about 100 and 105. So even that difference in the depreciating of the shilling will cause an inflated cost. Because we are looking at these costs in the shilling value. But you're borrowing it in the dollar. So that's one factor. Another factor also prices of goods are also rising. So maybe the hundred billion could be way high, but there's some aspect of depreciating shilling also the cost of goods rising that's causing the cost to seem inflated, yet it's not inflated. So it's a time period issue. Other than that, we need to stop putting politics into mm -hmm. such an mm -hmm. economic issue. Because if you make politics and economics, you'll never agree because you're looking from a taxpayer's perspective, yeah. but you're not looking at what's happening to the currency, what's happening to the economy, what's happening to inflation. So you're not matching like for like. Mm -hmm. So once we give all this information and put it on the table and analyze, then we can come and say whether the project was inflated or not. But sitting back and comparing costing that was done almost 10 years ago and, and uh, costing uh, that it is right now, it makes no sense. Ultimately, yeah, okay. you think this was value for money, ultimately? Ultimately, in my opinion, I think it's value for money, given that this is a long-term project. We are expecting this project to last Kenya for another maybe 50 years before we can even upgrade it. So it's value for money. You can repay this loan in 30 years and then start earning from it. People are looking at SGR as, a, as like a company on its own borrowing the money. It's not SGR which is borrowing money. It's a Kenyan government which is the Kenyan economy. So the ripple effect of the SGR on the economy is what is going to pay out this loan that you know the, okay. the Chinese. All right. you look at Kenya in terms of debt. We are about 60% of debt to GDP. Countries like China, well-developed countries, are at about 250% debt to GDP. So does that tell you, this issue of debt and costing is just something to block our eyes from development and moving forward. So if, you, if, if the government was to sit down and start explaining every, every small issue, we won't move forward. Because someone will just come up and say, this is an issue here, this is an issue here. So first, do the project, deliver the project, do the audit. If someone stole money from it, Take them to the court and charge them. All right. Uh, Usain, yeah. All right. Very briefly, uh, right. Usain, uh, very briefly. In terms of uh, my colleague, the economist is uh, alluding that that may have been on the high side. So uh, the solution then, Usain, that I was saying even from the beginning, is that let's not talk about facts after the end of the project, but facts must come before the project, so that everybody may be on the page, so that even when we anticipate some of the costs and some of the good facts that I'm getting, that everybody be informed, so that we don't have the political class using this the way Mishimura said and pulling uh, political strings and we end up 
mm -hmm. caught up in the middle. So that's where the problem is. Okay. But you see what saying, we also need to understand all these things have assumptions. And, and when you're doing an infrastructure project, for example, you don't know what a natural disaster will come in. There are many factors that come in, Hussein. And just look at the other day when we had very heavy rains in Mombasa and the whole of the coastal region. One, one side, the thing is swept away. You have to come in and you haven't even handed over the project to even the government that you're saying it's for the government. It's still in their hands. So there are many factors that come in and not just on that project, in many other projects. I would wish as a country, and I agree with Ray, we must look as we start, but you'll always put in, even you in your family, when you're going somewhere, I mean, there's that uh, miscellaneous that you say, anything can happen on the way, and we have to end up doing this. So l let us also as a country uh, learn to have this engagement where we know these are things we are doing, but we assume as we move forward, but there are issues that cannot come and we find ourselves being derailed as we move also. Right. Thank, Thank you so much. Nominated Senator Beatrice Salachi. I think we'll now release this so that you can go and present your nomination papers to the IBC. Of course, she's vying for MP, the Great North Constituency in Nairobi and we wish you all the best. Senator, thank you for making it. Thank you very much and as I joined KJ, I hope he has understood I'm late also. <laughs> thank, <you. laughs> oh, thank you and we wish you all the best. John Dua is an investment analyst with Cyton. Thank you for making time for us. Ray, of course, Ray O'Chain is a governance analyst and he still stays with us as we take this break. Uh, Citizen Extra continues.